looks like she looks flying solo for this intro. Hey, what's up, my Doku's Jason here, welcome you back to more Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Last time, we wrapped up some side questing in Colony 6, as there really wasn't much else that was appearing, and it could possibly just be because I wasn't talking to the right people, but it could also just be because our affinity wasn't high enough. So I made the general decision to come here, to Agniratha. And this time, we have been instructed that that tower is going to house what we are wanting to see. And so we're going to head that way. So, go ahead and go past this Telethia. And... Make our way up here. Got some item orbs, which, you know, obviously shows that we are going to have a, uh... I have a collectpedia. And this one's decently huge. We're actually almost finished with every single collectpedia in the game. Quite literally, the only one we have don't have yet is the Bionis Interior, and that's because we haven't been to the locations within the Bionis Interior that actually house the item orbs. So, yeah. Anyway. Come over this way. We have made it to the central tower. And there is a bunch of exclamation points all around this area. As well as a shop. However, I think we're going to go up and talk to... Or see what we need to see before we make any decisions on outfit changes. Found the data center. It looks like Shulk learned a new skill, which completely uh, ma completes his intuition uh, skill branch. So let's do pessimism. Uh, it looks like the power's up and running. <sighs> Fiora, what's the matter? Everyone. Follow me. <gasps> what is that? It looks like it's here. But it's just an image. No way. Whoa! You're right! These are memories of a time long forgotten. Fiora? Hey. They were left behind by the Machina before they abandoned this place so that others may know their story. Her voice sounds like... In ancient times, when the Bionis and the Mekonis came into existence, I was born as well. Just as the Bionis had a soul, I came to exist in this world. As the soul of the Mekonis. I created my children on Mekonis and acquired this body. They called themselves Machina. And Mekonis was transformed into a world brimming with life. The Machina gave rise to an advanced civilization and built this great city. This city? Can't believe it used to be so lively. They lived their lives in peace and harmony. The gentle Machina worshipped me. Life also flourished on Bionis. The 
The Machina generously shared the fruits of their civilization with the peoples of the Bionis. They believed their two worlds would grow hand in hand. Then, a terrible fate descended on them from above. Wielding the Sword of Light, the Bionis attempted to destroy the Machina. Are those Telethia? I tried to save the Mechanon, and confronted the Bionis. And so, I confronted Zanza. Z Zanza? The battle waged on and on. Even as our life forces depleted, Zanz and I continued to fight. However, it did at last come to an end. Giant. This is when Zanza was imprisoned. Taking advantage of my final blow to the Bionis, its, it's beings took Zanza and sealed him firmly. However, the battle with Zanza had greatly consumed my life force. I warned the surviving Machina that the Bionis had not yet been destroyed, and that one day he would be released. I'm the one who released him. I then entered a long and deep slumber in preparation for Zanza's inevitable reawakening. It's all clear to me what you wanted to do. Stop the battle between the Bionis and the Maconis. Fiora, I see now. It was her inside you. Yes. Lady Manus desired a body in which she could be free. And after you were captured by Egil's Mekon, it was I who transferred her soul into your body. But why did it have to be my body? Because. You are close to Shulk. The heir to the Monado.
It was all because of our world, because of Bionis, that this city was devastated. Now I understand why Egil would want to stop the Bionis from reawakening. I get it too. But how's killing any of us gonna solve his problem? Precisely. What happened to the Machina was a tragedy. But we cannot forgive the Mechon attack on Bionis. What worries me is the Monado that the Bionis used. It's no different from how the legends describe, but still. It must hold a deadly power. But you have used it wisely, Shulk. It has not overwhelmed you, as it did me. He's right. If you hadn't been using the Monado, we wouldn't have lasted five minutes. But it was Zanza who bestowed this sword upon me. However, it is not Zanza who now wields the Monado. It is you, Shulk. <sighs> that is also the reason why Maynath chose Fiora as a vessel. So that the tragedy of he who wields the Monado would not be repeated. The tragedy of he who wields the Monado? Shulk, believe. Believe in the path you have chosen, and those who walk it with you. Maynath once said this of the Monado. The Monado is not simply a unique weapon. It is the light within each and every person in this world. Light? What do you mean? It is the light of life. The will to survive no matter what. Perhaps Lady Maynath was drawn to your light. Beyond there lies the Maynath Shrine. Egil will be there. Is it still your intention to defeat Egil? That has not changed. We understand the history of Mechonis now. If he is willing to listen, we will try to reason with him. But if not... I understand. Then, if that is your decision, so be it. I will try to persuade Egil one last time. But I am prepared for his refusal. Venea. I know Venea said she'll try to persuade him, but she didn't sound confident. We have to go after her. But how do we get to the shrine from here? Up ahead is a transporter leading to the shrine. But it's inactive. We need to trigger the verification devices to activate it. We'll find one at the top of each of the four pillars. If we trigger them all, we can use the transporter. Ah, uh, how Fiora know that? Maynath's memories. She tells me these things. Do you know how to trigger them? Maybe my body itself is the key. Okay. Then let's get searching. And search we shall. We have Shrine Transport. We have to use the verification devices on the four pillars to unlock the transporter. And then we, you know, have a similar thing where it's telling us to use all of the four pillars. Alright, but... <clears throat> before we head off into Agneritha itself, one thing we have to do is pick up these quests, but another thing we're going to do is actually go back to the Fallen Arm. The reason I want to go back to the Fallen Arm is actually because there is a side quest here that we have to pick up after we got to Agner Agneritha. Especially now that we've, you know, know the history of Makanis. Because Zelex actually has this quest. I'm actually going to go check the Fallen Arm real quick. History of the okay, Dunban's actually the one that comments. Which, Dunban's in the party, actually. Let's, let's bring him into view and talk to him. Yes? How could th that have happened? Those were some of the most important memories. Do you think you could hear me out this one last time? I was going through the memories you retrieved for us, and I realized that some of the most important ones were missing. Those memories can't be restored, but there is a separate backup. I know it's rude of me to ask, but could you find the backup? We must finish what we started. I too am somewhat interested in your people. The backup is a single chip, so there's less th to find than before, but doing so may be more difficult. Even so, will you do it? We have to collect the memory 903 in the Judicial District in Agniratha. Thank you. 
I gr my gratitude to you is all, all is to you all is securely pro stored in within my memory. God, I botched. I hate botching up these conversations. <laughs> um. Anyway, now that we've picked up this quest, this is a quest that we can you know take on here. Now that we've you know reached Agniratha and we have uh, the ability to go searching around it. So, if I could stop pressing X to bring, try to bring up my map, I s it's, it's because I've actually been with recording Xenoblade and the fact that Xenoblade 3 is coming out in like a couple weeks from when I'm recording this. Um, like, I've actually been playing through Xenoblade 2 on my, uh, on my actual S Nintendo Switch file. And so, yeah, I have the X button on that one to bring up the map. So, that's mainly why I keep messing them up. Alright, we have Civil Protection 1. So this is, these are a bunch of, uh, generic quests. That we're going to just pick up. So I guess I'll see you guys at the end of all, all this picking up. Okay, now that we've went to all the terminals and picked up all the quests, we're gonna go ahead and look at all these weapons and uh, items here. Go ahead and see if any of these are actually worth picking up, which the Magna Biter 2 is actually worth picking up for, um, for Ricky. Karma Blades, uh, doesn't really look all that great. Uh, let's see, the Magna Cannon, nope. Dunban, uh... I want the garter. Nope. Okay, uh... Ooh. We're gonna go ahead and pick up some of these items for, uh... Fiora because I think Fiora looks like she's the only one who's really gonna benefit from any of these upgrades. This seems to be the case for, you know, the past few times I've uh the past few times I've upgraded everybody's attack like stats and outfits, like equipment basically. Like she's been the only one who's actually benefited from it because uh Hmm. I don't know. Should I? I th wait. Three's not gonna be that bad, actually. So let's go ahead and equip that. And then, is there anything beneficial in the way of drones that I want to pick up? It's cannon drones too. The physical defense and the ether defense drop a little bit. Um, hmm. You know what? Here's here's what I'm going to do. I'll buy one of this and one of this. And then we'll go in and change around uh, Fiora's outfit and see just how it's going to work. Wow, we really like. Maybe yeah, I could equip some pro blade gear. There really isn't much for everybody to be have equipped that would, you know, change a wouldn't change a whole bunch of their stats. Anyway, so let's go ahead and use load up all these attack uh, frames.
Let's see how these drones are gonna be. You know what? Let's do cannon drones too. I think it'll be beneficial to us. As for weapons, doesn't look like Fiora needs anything else. She's got a whole brand new look. Let's go ahead and keep going. As yes, even though my window is basically around the time that I end the episode, uh, I just kind of want to get, I want to get to at least one tower before the episode is, you know, over. Anyway, come into here, we have the resident, residential district 2. So, Agniratha is, you know, kind of similar to Colony 6 and Colony 9, where, you know, it's got a bunch of districts, it's a, it's a nice t big town, but it's, you know, it's an area in and of itself, it's an ex area to explore. And with it, we, you know, obviously have our monster quests, our collection quests, search quests, and um, other types of quests. I don't even know why I decided to use Battle Soul there. I did not actually mean to do that. I was trying to switch over to using Air, air Slash. There we go. Okay, we have Eager. Eager McBeaver. All right, we have new parts S. What do we got over here? These are two mech we're going to want to fight. Let's go and use Monado Enchant. Oh wait, I actually don't need a Monado Enchant now that I think about it. Because, uh... Dunban's using a Magna weapon, and I'm pretty sure Magna weapons actually don't need Monado and Chan. I think they actually just defeat Mechon anyway. Okay, let's see. There we go. But we mustn't be careless. I wasn't meaning to fight you, I was actually wanting to get over here and fight you. It's over. Right, let's keep going. I can see this isn't pushing you at all. Okay, so that takes care of the um that takes care of the Mechon in this location. Now we are at Kalkos Pillar. Go ahead and head up the stairs. We will find yet another haste, which we need to take down for one of those, um, one of those monster quests. Even though it's not called a monster quest, you can basically tell what each of these side quests we were given is. And we're gonna go ahead and heal. Oh. I didn't even realize that there was a uh, mass-produced face here. Uh, oh, that's not. That was very much not a good thing. Let's go ahead and go for a chain attack, and fewer is dead. I may very well be screwed. Okay, that didn't exactly work out how I wanted it to. But that's okay. 
because we can just come back up here and yeah we'll re-challenge him since now we uh are not you know coming off of a different fight easy peasy well when you're not almost half dead what we got to the uh first control platform and it sounded like uh Fiora got a level up. Also, someone had a skill learned. Oh, Dunban and Fiora actually had, um, some level ups with their skills. Or not level ups, uh, some heart to heart, you know, advancements, I guess. Or not heart to heart. Affinity advancements. I don't know. I don't know how to word that. <laughs> anyway, Ryan's diligence uh, skill tree branch got comp was complete, so we're gonna go ahead and switch him over to impatience. Still, it's funny. It's Ricky's the only one who does not have all of his skill skill or have fourth skill branch unlocked yet. Let's go ahead and hit this verification device. And. That takes care of the first of the four pillars. Come over here, we can go ahead and identify this uh, Telethia. And we know where to head next. We have t uh, four. We have three more towers to go, or pillars, I guess, to go uh, look th look at and turn on the sh to the shrine, get to the shrine transporter. So we're gonna do that. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like, share it out a ton. Make sure to subscribe to Dibbly Dibbly if you have not already. And I will see you guys all later.